Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to thank you today again to come in, allowing me to come into your home or wheresoever you are. God bless you and I trust God that by you taking a time out to allow us to be into your home, God would give you a special blessing to you. Amen? That you would have a blessed week and probably, let me say, for the rest of your life. I don't want to limit what God can do. Amen? I want to again continue back on part two on what spirit do you have part one i was sharing with us the spirit of god and sharing with us the different spirit that god can pour upon your life and to make your life completely different than what you think it is today the spirit of of the lord this is one where when you allow yourself as we will say you, 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 give your, you surrender your life to the Lord That he will come and live with you He said so He said if you knock, he knock at the door And if you open, he will come and sup with you Do we have the spirit of wisdom also? The Lord want to give you that spirit The Lord also want to give you the spirit of understanding The Lord want to give you the spirit of counseling The Lord want to give you the spirit of power The Lord want to give you the spirit of wisdom And the Lord want to give you the spirit of of the fear of the Lord, so that we'll keep in check and we'll be able to walk single-minded, knowing that we're here to serve Him and Him only. This is what was man created for, to worship God. But we have been God, we have been robbed in the Garden of Eden, and we have realized now that man is thinking to himself he can do his own thing. We have seen man even want to be the own God, trying to create every avenue to avoid God. We cannot avoid God. We all will want to come in contact with God, whether in rapture, whether we die. Someday, we will have to face Him. And if we take the chance now, if we take the opportunity now, to just allow Him to rest His same spirit upon us, brothers and sisters, I can tell them out of my experience, what can happen to you? Temptation comes across my life. Challenges come my, across my life. Depression comes across my life. Frustration. So many things that the enemy show at me but because even i being ignorant not recognizing how much and how powerful the spirit of god was upon me were able to overcome each and everyone because of the spirit of god which dwelt in me and i want to share that here with you today i have a very important spirit i want to share with us today that many people have been born by it not only from now and that take them even from way back in africa and that spirit is still is trapped so many lives today that is why you find so many people are living in poverty today that's why earlier on last week i was sharing with us how come does the caribbean is counted in 2.6 billion people is hunger today in this world why the Caribbean have to be counted with that? Because there is a spirit that is keeping many of us, many people, trapped so that they cannot come out from that situation. This is why some of them have to be counted in that devastating situation. Hunger and even in the aspect of being malnourished. Brothers and sisters, today I want to bring us into the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. He said here, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now, God has chosen us as believers to be that special people. We have that authority to be so much special unto God. But hear what goes on with us here. I want to bring us back up into, from verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land where thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the, Gen the Genocides, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Parasites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, 
seven nations greater and mightier than them. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriage with them. Thy daughters thou shalt not give unto thy sons, nor his daughters shalt thou take unto thy sons. For they will turn away thy sons from following me, that they shall serve other gods, so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly, but thou shalt ye deal with them, ye shall destroy their altars, and break down their image, and cut down their groven, and burn their groven image with fire. Now, I want to share, share with us here. As I was saying earlier on, many of us, probably the generation today, may not be speaking much about it. But those of us who grew up in the time of this, that even during the Rastafarian time, speaking about we want to go back to Africa. Africa is our motherland. And when through school time, we look at our history, that many of us in the Caribbean come from slave trade from Africa. But what I see happen to many of us out of that, there are spirits out of Africa that we are carrying into the Caribbean. And today, many of us are still living under such curse. And when I look into the scripture, these are some of the, 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 the curse that are overtaking us today. I will tell you for myself, in the earlier stage of life, when we did not have so many technology to our disposal, we have read about Africa and we have been taught of Africa as poor and vulnerable. Thanks be to God that he, the Lord said that in the last days, he will, knowledge shall increase. And knowledge did and do increase and is continuing at a fast pace now. Happened that we could sit in our home now and watch inside Africa. And Africa is not as poor and wretched that the Western world wanted us to see. We have seen there are brilliant people, there are intelligent people. Africa have beautiful cities. Yet, what happened to many of us, we are still holding on to the villages of Africa descendant. I want to say to some of us here today that Haiti is one of a typical example that comes from Africa and holds on to the culture and a curse from Africa. And that curse comes from, you talk about, we use the word as obia, but it's a spiritual curse. They hold on to a false God, a false belief, and they bind themselves within that. That is why you see today, they cannot come out from the situation. No man will be able to lose them unless they themselves come to the recognition, the realization that they need to trust God to come from the situation that, that they are in. Brothers and sisters, these are seven spirits I want to highlight to us as today, modern day people. It is still raining here today. The seven evil spirits of Canaan, that is how it, 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 it delivered. The Hittite spirit means sons of terror. The Jerusite spirit means clay dwellers. The Amorite mean mountain dwellers. The Canaanites mean low land people. The parasite means belonging to the village, villagers connected. The Hephites mean village, and the Jebusite spirit of boasting of itself. But today I want to teach us on the parasite spirit, because it seems to me these are the spirit that trapped so many people in poverty. And I want to give you the full meaning of the parasite spirit. This is why I ask the question, what spirit do you have? You must, when, I, when God, help, God helped me today, that when I finish here, uh, many of you all would look at yourself, look back at your, your four parents, and look at your generation today, 
and really take a deep insight and see if you do not trap or if you are still not trapped in such a spirit. He said that the parasite spirit belonging to the village, village is connected. It is a small, small-minded people that grow up in the village are exposed to limited opportunities and arrested development. When he said arrested development, in other words, they're just trapped in that situation. They cannot develop more than they are. This spirit produces a limited vision, causing a person to see themselves as insignificant, leading to laziness and poverty. Right in our country today, we always have the experience about tongue and country. And there are people who left the countryside, and I can say that, and come to the city and for a reason or able, as we would say, grow out from that village mentality. And by doing that, were able to establish or build a foundation for the family. But what happened there sometimes, they don't teach the generation where do they come from. And so that when their family come to the same city, because was not taught properly, the family itself be being, in, in, being humiliated. Why you don't go back to the village? Look at you, you're dirty, you're... You, you, you have no sense, you're foolish. Sometimes we own people take us from the countryside, so to speak, and bring us into the tongue and make us work, the laborers work, bring us to work as maid and servant in the house. Because to them, they reach to a, to a, to a, to a point that they are no more this sort of villagers people. I thank God for that you were able to break a curse. And they start taking on the genocide spirit, start t stepping on the toes of their own brothers and sisters. But let me say to us here, when we don't teach, and by not teaching our generation what we, we really come to in life, they can also be trapped back into that gebicide, that gebicide spirit and also that parasite spirit. Now I want to bring us to a point here with the parasite spirit and to more so to the people who have seen themselves insignificant of coming out from the situation they are in. I've seen people leave the countryside and come to the city, come to the towns of Guav and St. George's and Grenville and Sutter's, and they may live, as we call the rural areas, and come to this place and think to themselves that the people in this place are more, more superior than them. They are not more superior than you. The only thing is that you come from a village where there was less opportunity, there was less production there for you, so you could not have developed yourself to the standard that God have you too. But now you have come to a place that where you can break that curse. But how could you break that curse as we go back into the same spirit of God? First thing you got to ask for is the spirit of the Lord upon your life, which would give you wisdom and understanding to make sure that you break that curse upon you and you can see yourself as one of those who you might be think is more superior than you. None of us here are superior than one another. The difference is, is the type of spirit that we allow rest upon our life. Too many people have stay in the countryside and they have let themselves be trapped with, this, with the environment in the countryside. All we know is about in the countryside, we go to the we, we go into the, the as we say to the bush or we sit on the side of the road, we eat and we call smoke food. We, we can't afford to buy a tube of gas. We can't afford to pay electricity bill. So we go just remain so and be the one going and pick the cocoa and pick up the nutmeg and come to the tongue and sell it for less than the value in other words just for survival. You are not here for survival. God have you here for a purpose. This is why he offers his seven spirit upon our lives. And he tells us that when we, he takes us out from the land where he would put us not to get back into that, that, that spirit of this, the, the, the parasite spirit, but break that. And, and what happened to many of us, we don't do background check and upon ourselves and upon the people that we get into. Brothers and sisters, there are people out there who are so trapped in the, in the Canaanite spirits. And they, to them, they use it to trap others just the same. And I want to say to us here, we can get out of it. The Bible tells me that we have to be very careful who we get ourselves involved in. And that is why you find there are so many women who out there is crying out. There are so many children out there who are seeking a father figure. Because what is happening there, these men are trapped in the Canaanite spirit. 
And these women don't know that they marry these men. And happening that the spirit of these men go over to their life. And they have seen their life now that they cannot come out from the poverty state that they are in. Brothers and sisters, I'm saying today, there is hope. There is time available. Do you need financially sometimes cannot help you because when every time the finance come into your hand, what you find happening for no reason is just vanishing away. We know that the economic situation, um, cost of living is, is, is at a high peak. But the Bible said here in, in Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 5, if, he, if we allow him to pour his spirit upon us, we can be fruitful. We can make life different. Too many times we depend on people to make things happen for us. And we're not seeking the right solution. We're not seeking the right one. And the right one we've got to seek is the Lord Jesus Christ who will make that difference for us. He's offering himself to pour his spirit upon us that we can break the, the spirit of the Canaanites. We can break that Jebusite spirit that keep many of us in a village-minded state. When you look... If, if you look at the African movies today, and you can still see that happening, that the people who are living in the village in Africa are trapped in poverty. Their life is so limited, and they see themselves so insignificant. When you watch some of them documentary or even some of the movies, and you see some of them happen to get down into the tongue, when they reach through the tongue, now they see a whole new world to them. But thanks be to God, there are some of those who are able to break out tight and they were able to go back and bring others out of it. We in Grenada can do the same. We can educate our people, and it starts first from the church. We have to let the people know there is hope, better hope, and better life than the life that they are thinking that, that is all they could, that all is an offer for them. We can make a difference to them. I am here today representing Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and I'm offering this to you today, that if you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, if you give your heart solely unto Him, He can raise the seven spirit of, you, uh, of God upon you, and you can come out from the Canaanite spirit, especially the one that we all notable of, is the, the parasite spirit, the one that makes many of us feel so insignificant. Brothers and sisters, you hear me say that time after after time, and thanks be to God because His Spirit was upon me a long time ago. I was in one of those in a parasite spirit, one where I, I, I was trapped. My life was really down and out, where it seems that very little I could have afforded in my life. But thanks be to God today that I'm, he has have, he have lifted me out from that parasite spirit. And I thanks be to God where I know he said to me in his word and he promised and he has given me unto that. He said that if I obey him, I keep his commandment, I will be a borrower and not a lender. He will make me head and not tail. Oh, he said he would bless my going in and my coming out. He would bless me in my lying down and my standing up. And I know he has done that for me. And I know he can do it for you today only if you trust him. One other thing I have trust God and I thank God for, when I read the 12... The, the 12 tribe of Israel, the different sons, and I read the testimony, one of the, the testimony, one of the sons, the son of Ezekiel, when I think, when I read of him, and he said one of the things that we got to do as human beings, to stay single-minded, when you stay single-minded and you trust God, he would bless you 10,000 times fold. And I've seen and I'm practicing that day to day and just focusing on, on the Lord Jesus Christ, him and him, only, Christ, only him I would serve. I don't want my mind to be straight and bombarded with the things of this world and to be, oh, be wrapped up with all the, the, the excitement of this world, but to focus on what God has called me on to and to keep my eyes upon the cross. And I thank God for that. And I can tell you that my life has been changed. It has been turned around. And I don't always want to keep that to myself. That is why today, uh, when I learn about the seven spirit of God, and I learn about the seven Canaanite spirit, and what they, they, they represent it, I can give you the opportunity today to take the seven spirit of God. It will make a difference in your life. He you can turn your life around. He you can turn your family life around. He can turn the village that you are in. Because when you take on the seven spirit of God and they start seeing the productivity and the, 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 the turn around in your life and they start seeing progress in your life, they would ask, how come you do it? And all they've got to do is to give them that opportunity. Give them that option. Tell them there is a God who is bigger than the universe. He, there is a God who can turn everything around. He can, he's the one that causes the lame to walk. He's the one that causes the blind to see. He's the one that raised the dead. He's the one that walk upon the sea, and he can do it for you, and he can do it for me. When it seems all is lost, and that's what the, the parasite 
Spirit does in the village. He makes life so insignificant. He makes you look so limited. He, he traps you in production that he arrests you, that he tells you that nothing more you can do than what you are doing here. It's just as I would say it here, just pick cocoa and pick nutmeg and cut banana and plant field and just be as, a, as, as what we call a bush boy. You are not a bush boy, neither a bush girl. You are much more than that. You can come to the city. You can go out to the city and be a accountant. You can go out there and you can be a pastor. You can go out there and be a lawyer. You can go out there and be a doctor. You can go out there and be a qualified nurse. You can go out there and be a bus driver. You can go out there and be a, a, a manager in any one of the big institutions there is out there. But you got to ask God to break that parasite spirit upon your life. You've got to ask God to take it away and open your eyes. Let it give you the spirit of wisdom. Let it give you the spirit of counseling. Let it give you the power, the spirit of power. Let it give you the spirit of, of knowledge. And it bind that together and you will see how much your life will change. I'm here today not to bash anybody, but I'm here to tell you that we are sometimes being destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. And here today, God has given me the understanding to tell you that there is hope for you. Your life can turn around. Your family life can turn around. Your home can turn around. Your village can turn around. Your city can turn around. Your country can turn around. We in Grenada, we, we, we are associated with it. And it's the same thing we see happening presently now with so many young people. They are trapped in such a way that only what they're concerned about is a gadget and excitement and, and partying. This would bring us into poverty. If you only turn your life around from that and you see God, you would see how much more. That hard working dollar, you just work for sometimes and you just take it sometimes and you put it into, in, 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 into vanity. As the Bible said, you put it into pocket with holes. You would only see pleasure for a season because sin gives pleasure for a season. But let me trust, and trust God today, you can make a difference in your life. You can turn this thing around. You can open your eyes and see a brighter future to the Lord Jesus Christ. When you take on the spirit of God in your life, the spirit of wisdom and understanding what life means to you. You get the knowledge how to go about living the life that God has given unto you. I want to trust God today. I want to thank God today. I want to pray that you will take that opportunity. You can make an investment in yourself by trusting in God. Your investment sometimes will not be the finances that man think, but the investment and the best investment you can make is when you invest your time in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ will make that different for you. He can turn things around. The time that you think you are the lost, he can redeem the, that time for you. What the conquer worm has eaten, what the caterpillar has eaten, God can restore you back to that. To thee, only if you turn yourself back unto him. I want to give God thanks and praise as he gave me that opportunity to share with you today and to let you know there are 14 spirits presently roaming this earth. And the 14 spirits, seven from God, which is perfection, and the seven from evil spirit of Canaan. And you can make a choice, but the choice I would love you for you to make today is the seven spirit of God. Because without living in the seven spirit of God, you are living in the seven spirit of the Canaanites. And the, the one that is more, as I said over and over, trapped many of us today, is the spirit of the parasite spirit. Even in schools, when children should be excelling, that parasite spirit is there with them. Because they might come from a certain background. They feel to themselves they cannot do it. But I break that spirit today. Father, as I come before you, I need a close. I want to pray today, O oh God, of our country. I pray, O oh God, to break that seven Canaanite spirit which is hovering over our country today, O oh God, Father Lord. That Lord, that things can turn around. That parasite spirit especially. What traps so many lives, which cause so many families to go from, from generation to generation in poverty, making them feel that they are insignificant, they cannot do nothing better than they are. But Lord, today, O oh God, Lord, I pray that, that today is the last day for it, O oh God, that they would learn and they would trust you, O oh God, Father, and turn to that spirit that you have offering them, O oh God, Father, Lord. the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counseling, the spirit of power, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. And God, that you would walk with them, O oh God, Father, you would turn things around for them, O oh God, Father, Lord. Lord, touch your life, O oh God, Father, Lord. 
Lord, help this country, oh God, Father. As we go into, oh God, that festive season, oh God, I pray you to intervene, oh God, that many lives even now who may have plans, oh God, to have it, oh God, at the best of their ability, that you will turn their life to you, oh God, Father, Lord, that it will change, oh God, that, oh God, jab, jab, and whatsoever, oh God, they may think, oh God, is the best, oh God, oh God, trapped, oh God, by the skin and the spirit, oh God, Father, Lord, you will change their life, oh God, and they will come to know you in a personal way, oh God, Father, Lord. Lord, lift all them up, O God, Lord, from the miracle, O God, and set their feet on the rock to stay. Because they said, O God, one of the spirit, O God, is a clay dwellers. O God, Father, Lord, I pray, O God, I can come out from that clay dweller spirit, O God, Father, Lord, and put their foot, O God, on the rock to stay, O God, Father, Lord. Yes, Lord, I trust, O God, Father, Lord. Lord, that generous right spirit, O God, Father, Lord. Lord, that heat right spirit, O God, Father, Lord. The son of terror, O God. The generous right spirit, O God. The clay dweller, O God, Father, Lord. The, the amorite right spirit, O God. The mountain dwellers, O God, Father, Lord. Break them, spirit, O God, from oh, my people today, O God, Father, Lord. And help them, O God, Father, Lord, that they will come to know you in a personal way, O God. We thank you, O God. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This is Minister Albert Ferguson. Thanking you again a lot. Thanking you for joining us again. Representing Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I continue announcing that if you need any help, you need to join us at non prayer of my church. Reverend Kelly Gangadin, 444-8281. And Mr. Albert Ferguson, 404-0405. I want to give each and every one, wish each and every one a blessed and wonderful week. That God will continue to stand by your side. And the opportunity that you have get gotten from me, that you'll be able to make use of it. Trust in him. He can turn things around for you. All is not lost. Where there is hope. And the hope that we have is in the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you and your family. Have a wonderful week. Amen and amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you.